Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County, powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and brought to you from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center with the man who, I don't know, I don't know what to say. John, are you ready for the new year? Happy New Year. <laughs> yes. Right. Happy New Year, Paul, Mr. Paul Roberts, and everybody tuning in from OC Talk Radio and all of our viewers and listeners out there. I'm your host, John Gutierrez, Senior Vice President here at the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And welcome once again to our community podcast show. Uh, I think it's been a little bit over a year now that we launched this show and we have another special guest with us starting off the new year. Uh, his name is Feli Michaka and he's the senior field engineer and brand ambassador uh, with Manage Solutions. We welcome Feli who's a, a member of our chamber and just does an amazing job in the community. Thank you, John. Happy New Year to everybody. Wow. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Paul wants to say something. I got to ask one question. Go ahead, Paul. That's the longest title, and I sound so feel so dumb. I have no <laughs> idea what a senior field engineer and brand ambassador is. It, it just sounds really cool, but uh, <laughs> senior field engineer, basically I'm a dedicated Microsoft engineer for customers in Orange County. So I basically handle all of the environment, infrastructure, all the way from email, all the way to websites and you name it, servers, etc. The brand ambassador was actually an addition that came out later because all the things that I'm doing, I'm doing with the community, it was just a given. And that's why they just basically decided to give me that title. But it's more about just promoting the brand and show up in events like this one today, right? So that's why the two uh, titles, uh, Paul. So, well, I, I got to say, Aside from you, of course, and we'll get into all of that, uh, all of that, which is the technology side um, and some great stuff that you're going to touch on on AI, right? Artificial yes. intelligence, which is a big uh, boom right now. Uh, we're also going to go into your story of how you got to this situation in your life. Uh, but more importantly, I, I got to say, you are a brand ambassador. You're, you're Mr. Total Marketer. You're everywhere. You're always networking, shaking hands. Right? Where do, where do you think you got that from? I, I love doing that because some people ask me, Feli, are you crazy? How can you do both? How can you still, like today, I'm doing a brand ambassador event right now, but at 1 p.m. I have to go troubleshoot some tech issues at West Coast Aviation, my customer. So I love doing what I do. I really love tech and I love aviation, but I love talking to people. I'm a people's person. Uh, and I think that's why the brand ambassador just was a given to me. I love talking to people. I love talking about my passion for tech. The media reaches out to me for answers and technology. And that was also part of why we ended up with a brand ambassador uh, title. Which is rare. Most people that are probably in technology, uh, they're more, I guess you could say, uh, prejudged to be non-social, right? I agree with you. In right? fact, um, I consider myself a different IT You're engineer. a hybrid. You're a hybrid. Correct, because you're right. Usually the IT guys are like, give me a list. I'll go behind the closet, close me out, and yeah. you don't even see me when I left, okay? Yeah. In, I, in that room gone. full of servers. Exactly, exactly. It's super hot with fans running, the AC cranked, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that's why um, I guess I'm a little different in that sense that I do that, but yet I'm also out there as the face of the company. Yes, so. which is good, right? Because that's part of why we're doing this show today. Exactly. I think it's very important that more of our listeners or watchers that are on our show here understand, you know, what is... IT, what's AI, uh, why we need more uh, Hispanic young kids going into this industry. Uh, from my understanding, there's not enough, right? There's not. And John, that really hurts my heart because I get invited to all these huge tech events, you know, big names, Microsoft, Google, you name it. And obviously, all you see is last names with, you know, Patels and Wens and not one Spanish last name. But then there's Fali Michaka, the Santanero, right? So that gets me excited. But at the same time, like, I'm like, this, this has to stop. We need to get the Latinos in. We need to get the women in this industry because it's only 3 to 10% presence of the ladies in tech. Well, we just had a tech event, a woman in tech event. About 500 ladies showed up to this event. And guess what? Out of that, I'm sure a good number of them are going to become tech engineers. So that's changing. But it's What do you think do it is? What do you think it, 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 it is that... Uh the stigma or what is it behind the 
the industry that we're not seeing enough Hispanic kids or Hispanic females going into this industry? I think number one is just the, the information. Sometimes we don't have the correct information. Number two could be that we automatically disqualifying ourselves. Think of the nursing industry, right? You most see girls in that, right? Mm -hmm. But why? That industry is open to everybody, not just the females, right? So in IT, it's the same thing. I remember my Microsoft class. I was probably, we had like 40 people and only two, three ladies in there. But it's, it's that has to change. I really believe that the ladies, the leadership that the ladies have, we need that in tech. And guess what? The ladies that make it in tech, they make it big. They right. once a state, they make it big because of that leadership that they possess automatically. It's a given for them. Yes. And I, and I have to say that um, I think one of the stigmas that we have in the industry is that it's very challenging or very maybe math oriented. I know you mentioned the word engineering, right? Um, and I know that's something that when I went to college, a lot of my friends were going to school to be engineers. Uh, and a lot of them went to Cal Poly and some of these big schools, right? And they would sit and do one problem on a board yeah. that took them like, I don't know how many hours, right? And so it could be, I don't know, the, the fact that maybe there is some math in, in the process of it. There is some calculus. There is some, yeah, I don't know what it involves. I think we need to be careful of uh, not following in the profile status. In other words, oh, no, that's only for Chinitos. Oh, no, that's only for, you know, people from India. Uh, no, that's not it at all. The opportunity is open to anybody and anyone that has the passion to do something better for their lives the sky's the limit right? and, and on that note let's go into the story of how and why you know you pursued this industry uh let's let's just real quick take it back let's peel the onion and let's go tell us a little bit about you uh where you were born and raised and how you ended up in this industry if we can get like a quick short summary of that that would be great because i know you have a great story to tell i was born in mexico puebla me gusta el mole soy poblano and soy a santanero también so so, so the mole is known in, in puebla. puebla yes yes puebla and oaxaca those are the two towns that have the best mole so for but, someone that's never been to your hometown in puebla what is it like is it just small town like well, Amazing. my this, the town where I was born, uh, back then there was not even electricity. It's not even in the map. I don't think it's on the map still. <laughs> it's that small, right? Wow. So my dad, when he sees that I have potential, I built a little plastic airplane. I what was, age? I was probably like 10. I was able to put an engine to the little plastic toy that I found in the trash. And I made that thing move. I didn't make it fly, but I made it move, right? So that's what my dad says. Honey, this guy, this little guy has talent. We we're going to do whatever we need to do to get him out of this town because there was no secundaria. There was no opportunity. Elementary, that's all you got. That's why the secundaria is open. junior high. Correct. Just for those listening, secundaria is junior high. And then prepa is high school, high right? High school, correct. So yeah. in your small town, you only had the uh, access to primaria. That's elementary it. school, primaria. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. What, what happens to kids after that then? Well, nothing. That's why the cycle it keeps going and going. And they go that, work. That chain, Chainly, that they chain go never work. is broken because they go to work on the field, uh, wow. you know, get the maize going, get the corn, get the cacahuate, right? The peanuts. And that's how they basically feed the family. Well, my dad says, well, we have to break this chain. And this little guy has talent. Let's get him out to a whole town five five hours away from my family. I was 14 when I left. So a bigger city, right? Correct. Bigger city. So, so you went, your dad was like, let's get him out of the small town. Let's go to a bigger city where there's more opportunity and an opportunity for a better education. Correct. And that's what happened. So he put me in the school. Where was this? Uh, this was in Acatlán de Osorio, Puebla. Uh, bigger town, obviously more schools. Okay. Kind of like a little city in a sense. Nice. Uh, my dad flies to the U.S. He sends me money for tuition. Three years later, he goes back to my graduation because uh, secondary is three years. Unfortunately, my dad passed and he didn't see me graduate. Sorry to hear that. So wow. that's where my dreams basically uh, crashed. Um, my dream was to go to the aviation school in Mexico City, fly the world and become an airline pilot. That was my dream. That was your dream? That was my Airline dream. pilot. Yes. This is what your dad wanted you to do also. Yes, uh, because he wow. saw that, that, that potential in me. So he didn't How did you overcome such a, I don't know, you know, just such a tough, tough time in your life, such a tragedy. Obviously, you were probably like, what, 17, 18 years old? I was 14 uh, when my 
when my dad passed away when 14. I graduated. I was 14. So you would have been like a sophomore in high school here yeah. or something. So wow. Im imagine uh, that conversation my dad and mom, my mom had. Honey, we don't know what's going to happen as far as meal tomorrow, but we have to do whatever we need to do for to fail you to have an education. And I didn't hear that conversation, but I'm pretty sure it was something like Survival that. mode. Exactly. Wow. What happens next, Feli? So I, after uh, he passed, then obviously my dreams crashed and I, I was forced to come to the U.S. and work. Just whatever, right? Wash dishes, wash cars. That was in the early 80s. 1990s, I ended up driving trucks, the freeways of L.A. 2001, I get a Like car, a truck driver? A truck driver, yes. Okay. So I was a truck driver for 10 years in the 90s, the whole decade. Wow. 2001, I get an accident uh, and I'm basically disabled from work, labor work. And that's when I remember my dad's dream. That's when I remember, hey, this is my opportunity. So that work is comp money. Instead of going uh, to a dealer and buy a brand new truck with 20 inch, 22 inch rims spinners, they were very popular back then. <laughs> I decided, hey, this money is going for my future education. And I joined Microsoft school. And as they say, the rest is history. But what made you say, I'm gonna go and do this? like? What was the aha moment? Was it that you were there? These were tough times. You had a lot of to think about. Obviously, you were thinking about your dad, your dream. My dad was always uh, my inspiration in anything I did. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that at that time in my life, I knew that I had to take advantage of that opportunity. And obviously, uh, that image of my dad taking me to the school out of town um, was what really drove me. That was my. That was the fuel that just fired me to get to the next level. I knew it wasn't gonna be easy, uh, but I had no choice. I had to make it work. It was either make it work or die, literally, because I can't do labor work anymore, right? And so, you had mentioned you were also helping your mom and your family, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in your hometown. So sending you were money working, back home, yeah. Sending money. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so that was something that you were like, I gotta get this done no matter what. I had no choice. It so, had to work for me. So you go to Microsoft school. What was that like? For those that you know are listening, first time, of course, for those of you just tuning in, uh, Feli is in the IT industry and also in the AI that he'll talk about a little bit here. Um, what was that like once you went into the Microsoft school? Was it tough? Was it a challenge? It was super challenging. Remember, truck driver, technology. Two Absolutely different worlds. Two different worlds. I never touched the computer in my life. I never touched the keyboard or mouse in my life. I was actually afraid of technology, honestly. Okay. Wait, this is very important for all of you listening, right, Paul? I mean, that's. That, I am just marveling at this. This whole is story this is here. crazy. You went from being a truck driver, not being around computers, to suddenly I'm at Microsoft taking a course. How did you think you could do it? Because we were talking beforehand. I think the one thing that stops everybody is you say to yourself. I can't do this. Whatever it is, I can't leave my town. I can't go handle the math. No. I, I'm not. I can't do this. I can't do that. We convince ourselves we can't do stuff. Paul, every time I think of that uh, question, uh, it always goes back to the image of my dad. Yeah. The sacrifice he made to put me in school. Who would have thought my first class in that school would he put me in? Dibujo Tecnico Industrial. Draw, uh, technical drawing, mm -hmm. industrial technical drawing. Who would have thought that that class was gonna somehow put me in the right path when I started joining Microsoft School? Because some of the things started to make sense. Mm. Obviously, it was hard because that was a new field for me, right? I remember taking a class, the same class, 11 times. It was so bad that the instructor on the 12th time said, Feli, you can't come into my class anymore. You're becoming a distraction for my students. They're asking me, why are you coming back to Wait, the same class? Wait, this is at Microsoft? This was at a Microsoft private school. Private school. Uh, the uh, professor said I was distracting the students for coming back to take the same class over and over and over again. But that was the only way for me to get the information down. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Very persistent. And I have to take the class. I have to pass the exam. So you're somewhat stubborn. I am, yes. I am when it comes to my career, when it comes to my goals, when it comes to doing something out of the ordinary and become an extraordinary engineer, yes. Can I ask you, what, what did your dad do in this small town? My dad was that an albañil. He was basically a construction guy. Yeah. Um, build, and, build, building stuff, right? Albanil, yeah, building yeah. Uh, you know, homes, basically. So what did his friends and family say to him when he said, I'm gonna sacrifice everything for this little boy. I believe in this little boy. They're like, 
He's just another LeBron um, little village um, that we're um, all going to... He's not going to go anywhere. Wait, 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 wait Paul, Paul. He was LeBron James <laughs> yeah. in Puebla. I think that's it. He was Are you kidding James. me? He was LeBron James in Puebla, right? Yeah. My dad had some kind of respect because uh, my dad knew how to read blueprints. Now, check it out. My dad did not know how to read or write. He never went to school. That's my dad. But yeah. somehow yeah. he knew how to read the blueprints. He could read a blueprint, and he was a but format. He, he couldn't read or write. Yeah. A book, yeah. but yeah. he could read a blueprint. You, you know, Paul, and, and a, a lot of those people listening will know, a lot of our parents that were born in Mexico, like my dad was too, and didn't read or write. I mean, I think he had a third grade education or something. To your point, elementary school was the only level that mm -hmm. was provided in yep. small towns, yep. right? Because there wasn't schools. Um, and, uh, you know, before GPS, before all this, I remember my dad growing up would be like, yeah, mijo, we're going to go to so-and-so's house and you're going to turn on that palm tree and you're going to make a left. <laughs> and then um, over there on that greenhouse, you're going to make a right. And then you're going to see a car that's old and beat up and it's run down. It's right there. It's a brown one. You're going to make another left. And so my point to Paul and to what we're talking about is our parents figured it out. Yes. No matter what. Maybe they didn't know how to read or write. Maybe didn't, even when they came to the country, didn't know the, the language barrier. They figured it out. Like. Yep. You make it work. You make it. And that's basically your story, right? Think your of, story is you make it happen. Exactly. Think of the moms too. How they will have to feed the kids. Just mm -hmm. go to the woods, find seeds, whatever, and they'll make a meal out of it, right? Yeah. They'll make it work. And that's the mentality I think that we all should have, right? Even though we're in the United States, when you have the latest and greatest technology, we should always go back to that. Hey, whatever happens or whatever he gets put in front of me whatever I have it to takes. just go over it the mentality is whatever it takes yes whatever yes. it takes so you're at microsoft you graduate or you're past this point then what happens next you get into a career that yes obviously was totally different than what you were before as a truck exactly. driver exactly so uh, this is very interesting because in 2002 2001 2002 something happened in the industry and the dot-com bubble burst really now check it out as i was going into the tech industry a lot of engineers were leaving the tech industry because of what just happened interesting but i was excited I, I remember friends and family say, Feli, why are you going into that market when that market is completely crashing? Well, I saw that as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just to remember all of us that even through the challenges, we have to see the opportunity because guess what? Who would have thought that just by following that inside gut instinct, it was going to create, that was the beginning of an amazing, amazing and beautiful career in technology. And so I really want to go into how and why you feel now. It's so important, right? That more of our young Hispanics, yes. right? Follow the same dream you followed. Pursue that same, um, you know, dream that you hope other young Hispanic females or males will pursue. You're saying there's not enough of us out there pursuing this career. That has to change. The opportunity is tremendous in technology uh, for females and for male and for the youth specifically for the youth paul mentioned something earlier that's very important the youth is very gifted in technology a lot of the kids sometimes we come to kids for help right as yeah, parents as uh, grandparents they come to the kids for help on technology right you don't know how to use the app ask the little kid he'll tell you right yes uh, he'll find you the right app anyway i really believe that there's talent in the Latino community, females, guys, little kids, you name it. I think it's just a matter of if you see as a parent, if you see the potential in your little boy, little girl, hey, if you see that potential, your job is to empower them, empower them to pursue the career, just like my dad empowered me by doing what he did and making those sacrifices. Well, I will say, speaking of youth, I want to, at this moment, take a time to really thank Feli, because recently he did a really nice gesture. You donated a laptop to one of our youth chamber um, uh, people that needed uh, that technology, needed that tool. And unfortunately, this person didn't have one. And I know um, I was with John, our, our, our former chairman of our board, who, by the way, reached out to you. And you were so kind to say, John, I'll figure it out. And you were able to get John a nice laptop for this uh, member of our youth chamber. And um, it's just 
it goes to show that you're really passionate about our youth. You know, it's just that I know that that person, that student, this little gesture will change his life. Yeah. The fact that now he has a tool where he can do his homework, he can do work, whatever, right? But he, he couldn't do that before having that tool. I wish I would have those tools when I was starting, right? So somebody took the time to give me that hand. And, and, I'm just and, and a laptop thing. is not just a tool. It's like the toolbox. Yeah. I mean, it has so many tools, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so you doing that, first and foremost, thank you so much on behalf of our Hispanic Chamber of Commerce because I think that's that's, you know, we take pride in our youth chamber and having a great program for them. And so the fact that you stepped forward and did that, it's greatly appreciated. I have a passion for the youth. I have a passion for the youth. I was one of those kids, you know, 30 plus years ago. So I know exactly, I know what it is not to have those tools. I know what it is trying to pursue a career, but don't have the support of whatever, right? I, I know what it is not having it. And now that I have it, I think we can make a difference by just allowing these kids to having those tools. When John and I went to pick up this laptop, you gave us a really nice tour <laughs> of this uh, really cool aviation uh, airplane that hangar. That was really cool. That, that was, was really cool. So thank you so much that for that. Really cool. But you also mentioned something very interesting that day. You mentioned cyber technology, how there's a big boom in it, right? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? <clears throat> so there are three words that are dominating tech right now, technology. So we're going to talk about a little <clears throat> tech language, excuse me. Cloud, mm. the cloud, the famous cloud, number two fintech financial technology obviously ai artificial intelligence but all those three that foundation of all that is cybersecurity. if cybersecurity is not there as part of the foundation and something gets hit all these other things just collapse that's why i believe that the cyber security world the cyber uh, space is one of the spaces that we need to get a lot of engineers into in fact i'm going to go for a certification uh for cybersecurity because there's such a demand. There's more hacks than there's uh, engineers in cyber. Okay, that's the bottom line. Wait, there's more hackers? Yes, there are there more is... hackers than there is cyber engineers to counteract that attack. So that's why we need more engineers. And that's why this industry is paying really, really, really good money for those that get into that space. Well, it's interesting you say that because a good example is I was watching the news yesterday, right? And uh, they were showing how all the looting and breaking into the restaurants and the businesses and they're robbing. And then they interviewed somebody and they said, there's got to be more security. There's got to be more security on the street. There's got to. And that's kind of the same thing yeah. in the tech world, right? You need more security, yes. right? To protect you, f to protect your information, your business, whatever it may be from, like you said, all these hackers that are out there trying to steal. Uh, I'll give you an example. The other day I got a text that it said that a friend of mine who was my business partner who I hadn't seen in a long long time was tech texting me and I'm like I'm thinking I'm in a conversation with her she's my former business partner and right away my wife says don't answer that text and I'm like why uh one of our other employees just got the same text yeah, yeah. It, it's it's you know one of these fake accounts or whatever and literally they were having a conversation with me like if it was her hi, this is so-and-so, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They, they wanted, of course, me to yeah. send some money and this and that. It's just crazy how these hackers, yeah. right, tap into phones and uh, laptops, I'm sure, and apps and software. I have a rule for that. The rule, as a technology um, expert, if your name is not in my contacts and I get a call, I just don't answer it. Now, if I get the call and I see that it's something wrong right away, you start asking me for things that we never talked about. You know, you start asking for some information or some numbers or whatever, then that's when I know, okay, this is not a good, and I just automatically block it. Uh, common sense has a lot to do with this uh, scams. I think we need to be careful, not just to click on any email you get. Don't click on any invitation you get from Facebook or all these social media. WhatsApp is very, very famous for scams. Stay away from that stuff. Uh, and obviously you need to activate some of these tools. Uh, cybersecurity tools are already part of these applications. The multi-factor authentication, make sure you get that extra code when you're gonna sign into your account. Hackers cannot do anything without that extra code. That's why it's important that we protect all of our accounts, not just social media, but also our bank accounts. We got, we got three minutes left. We could spend three hours talking about this stuff. We, I want to hear your thoughts on AI, artificial intelligence, which we assume, I assume as a small business owner, is too, too slick for me, too complicated for me, too expensive. I can't figure that stuff out. 
2023, Paul uh, and John, was the year of AI. Artificial intelligence came in to stay, and we just need to adopt it. There's something called digital adoption. What that means is basically we need to learn it. We need to invest, and we need to learn it. One thing that I'm Whatever telling, it takes, as you said. Correct, right? correct. Uh, one thing that I'm telling my business owners is you have to have an executive decision today. From now on, we're going to invest two hours of learning in the company, whether it be a launch and learn, whether it be whatever, two hours a day to learn these tools. By the way, these tools or this um, tip has already been implemented in the corporate world. The corporate world is already doing this, okay? I know you mentioned earlier before the show, a lot of big corporations are already using AI. 92% of the Fortune 500, friends, 92% of the Fortune 500 companies, the Coca-Colas, the Microsoft, the Apples, those 500 top world companies are already using and implementing this AI tool. So they're the ways to find. Give us a couple of examples, small businesses like mine. It, I, I hear people talk, they use it for accounting. They use it for uh, setting up schedules. They use it to write their social media posts. They, uh, give us w this tool, this robotic tool. What can the robots do for us? Excel. If you're doing your Excel accounting stuff for the end of the month or whatever, you can just tell AI, give me the formula for this report, enter, boom, done for you. Instead of having to you know, figure it out and do that formula, AI can do it for you. Uh, PowerPoint, I just created a PowerPoint the other day for one presentation I was in. It took me about two or three hours. Now with Copilot, Microsoft Copilot, the new thing you're gonna hear about this more and more as we go on in 2024, Microsoft Copilot is basically implementing these AI tools to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all these tools that we use every single day that's gonna help you be more productive in any industry, really. Well, I also look at AI as something we've been using for a while. We just didn't identify exactly. it. Exactly. A good example is every time you say, Siri, turn off the TV. Exactly. Siri, was, turn yeah. on the lights. Siri, well, what do you think Siri is? Yeah. That That's was, a, it's, mm, it's a robot. It's a bot. It's a bot. It's somebody that you're telling <clears throat> to do something for you instead of you going and doing it. We've been using Siri for a long time. Remember, AI has been around since 1956. John McCarthy came out with that uh, concept. 1956. But what happened? Here's the keyword the pandemic 2020 there's that division of time before and after the pandemic hit and then everything got atomized everything got accelerated we weren't ready as a country technologically wise for this uh phenomenon called um the pandemic right but that was <clears throat> the tipping point where things just accelerated and got us to the point where we're at now that everything is technology everything well, is like, digital well like zoom right was something that boomed and during, of course, after the pandemic, pandemic, yep. podcast, right? Yep. Yep. What we're doing right now. Absolutely. <clears throat> Before the pandemic, uh, they talked about exactly. it. They did it, but it wasn't like during the pandemic, everybody started a podcast, right? That's and right. so there's certain things that I think even Paul doesn't realize you are AI, Paul. I, I right. Uh, the you, uh, Small Business Development Center, which we're, uh, there's one with you guys here. They did a recent seminar on this. And I, I was fascinated. Talked about tangible things for example your restaurant you want to set up an employee schedule that takes hours yeah. figuring all yeah. this who can't work this time jim has oh wait a minute i gotta erase this and put it here. you tell the ai robot put the data in it spits out a work schedule for you in seconds and, and I, I don't like to call it artificial intelligence i actually think of it as more as automated there you go intelligence i like that right because it's, a lot of it is just it's <clears throat> think of a computer with the billions and billions of billions of uh, information in right. it and that's why it's called artificial intelligence but obviously uh, in fact i read something yesterday from captain sully Sullenberg, the guy that landed the jet in the hudson river mm. he agrees with me and i completely agree too is that there's no way that ai could supersede human because you still need that human experience you still need that human um uh last minute decision that only a human can do when because something goes wrong exactly you, you gotta have the pilot exactly. but the rest so, of the time the plane can pretty much fly and land itself but you still need that guy that's gonna pull the trigger right. and you can turn it well, off well i gotta tell you and i know we don't have a lot of time we can go into this forever but yep. i gotta tell you the cars that are driving themselves and picking you up as uber in la yeah that is some you know just interesting i've been seeing that on the news a lot where they pick you up people get in them and and somebody said oh no i would never do that i'd be so scared yeah. and somebody said back to the gentleman on the news believe it or not that car is safer 
Yeah. Then if I was driving, you it, eliminate the human factor, and yeah. you eliminate. Yeah. Someone drunk driving, exactly. daydreaming, daydreaming, texting, texting yeah. uh, on drugs, whatever it is, right? <laughs> like now you eliminate those things. And of course, like you said, there's certain things that technology will have to evolve and which is and always that's evolving. the key word, uh, John, evolving. You have to let the process happen, right? I was at the restaurant the other day, actually Saturday, and my server was a robot now, right? So all I did is <laughs> order my meals through my app, I scan a QR code order my stuff and literally within a minute there's the robot in front of me with my meals and my drinks and if i want to refill same thing i just order it again literally within a minute there it is you eliminate the human factor you eliminate somebody else getting you order right because that happens a lot i, I will say Feli, <laughs> at ralph's where i go grocery shopping about two three times a week and i go to self-checkout i will say i'm the grumpy old guy that always says to the person standing uh there let me get this straight. I just spent a whole day working. Then I got to come here and bag my own stuff, <laughs> scan my own stuff, and you're going to tax me on all of this. I think if I'm going to go through the fast checkout, through the self-checkout, Give me a reward, right? At least don't tax me. Yeah. Because I'm the consumer paying the taxes for you to be here to help me, but yet I'm doing it all myself. So next thing you know, I'll be stocking the food. I said to her, next thing you know, I'll be stocking the milk. I'll be putting, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and I sounded like the grumpy old guy, right? But it's, it's, there's going to be some, I guess, challenges while the technology works. Part of the digital adoption I just talked about earlier. Yes. I think it's part of the process. And the faster, check this out, guys, and, and for friends that are watching, the faster we adopt this, the faster we learn these tools, the fastest we invest and get these tools implemented, we're going to be 10 years ahead of the competition. According to Bloomberg, the next 10 years, $1.5 trillion industry, the AI, AI industry. $1.5 trillion dollars AI industry. Folks, we're all getting into the AI industry. We're going to join Feli here. And most importantly, we want to thank Feli for being on our show, but also for being an ambassador. Because I know you're part of Managed you know, Solutions, uh, but more than anything, you're an ambassador to our Hispanic community to our Hispanic young kids out there, go to school, get into engineering, get into IT, obviously look into the AI stuff, right? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. One last note, I will tell you this. We recently had somebody come by to our chamber. And one of the things that's booming right now is they're building all these charging stations for the smart cars. I think it was like a $1.2 billion contract he got. And let me tell you, it was amazing. We need to work on that infrastructure. Gas stations will become a charging station. Yes. So imagine all the infrastructure that needs to be. And he the said game. there's not enough exactly. IT people. And he said there's not enough electricians. Exactly. Those are the two things he mentioned in our meeting. Let's put our name, our Mexican names and, and Latino last names out on the map by joining the tech industry. And we will soon have a conference for the AI community and the IT community. And we want more Hispanics to be involved in it. Feli, thank you for being here. Thank we run out of time. Thank Paul's you. giving me the stinky eye. <laughs> Folks, thank you for tuning in to another week of our community uh, podcast show powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Feli Michaca, thank you for being here, Senor Senior Field Engineer and Brand Ambassador at Manage Solutions. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, love you guys so much. And thank you for everybody. Have a fantastic 2020. Real quick, Paul, where can they reach you? Manage Solution website, managedsolution.com, managed with the D at the end, solution singular, managedsolution.com. That's our company website. Obviously, you can find me on social media as Feli Michaka and LinkedIn, the Instagram, Facebook. I'm Feli Tech. Michaka, Feli there's, Tech. There's another story about that. I don't have time. Feli for that, Tech. Feli Tech. T C T C H. Feli Tech. Michaka and Facebook. Thank you for being here, Feli. God Take it away, everybody. Paul. Well, there you have it. One more reason to stay tuned each and every time to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County. Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center.